Hey, everybody. You are about to hear a brief retelling of the movie La Asa de Papal. Before we get started, hit the like button and subscribe. It may only be a click for you, but it has a significant impact on the channel. The first episode begins with a girl waking up from a nightmare involving her boyfriend, whose name is Tokyo. She realizes that she is wanted for the murder of a security guard who killed her boyfriend during a robbery. Deciding it's time to leave, she begins her escape plan. As she walks, Tokyo thinks about her 30s and how her life is not working out the way she would like it to. A call from her mother makes her feel uneasy as she realizes that the woman is anxious. But her mother seems to fear for her safety and, ignoring her plans, mentions that Tokyo is alone. Tokyo shares future plans with her and she buries her early and says she's alone while agents are coloring in the background. While she's talking, she's being photographed by someone. After hanging up the phone, the girl continues her story. As she finishes talking, she notices that she is being photographed. Then a red car pulls up to her, in which sits a professor who claims to know everything about her and wants to offer her a case. The professor shows her photos taken outside her mother's house and offers to join the gang, offering a robbery worth 2 million and 400 million euros. Tokyo, perplexed, agrees to hear more. Here comes the paperboy gang, going so important. This is the house they will be living in, it looks much nicer and tidier on the outside than it does on the inside. The professor sat down with his subordinates and began to explain the case. The preparation will take five months, and it took half of his life to develop the plan. Next he sets the rules, no names, no personal questions or relationships. Since they don't give names the general decision was to call themselves capitals to make it easier to remember. So it turned out that the main character was called Tokyo. Now it's time to get acquainted, this is Berlin at first glance man is formidable, he has on the account of 27 robberies. The next old Moscow, at first he lived a quiet measured life, but then everything was tiresome and he decided to go to all sorts of things. He's a handyman, he took out a bank. Next Denver, son of Moscow. He's been doing a lot of things, but mostly not so much. Next is Rio, a mama's boy who can't do anything except push buttons on a keyboard and has never held anything heavier than a mouse. Helsinki and Donkey. These are pure bouncer soldiers. Well, and the last employee of the Nairobi group, a little bit of that, but without her, I tell you, nothing would have worked. Well, the professor about him there is no information at all, he says that they will not steal anyone's money, they will twist everything so that people will even sympathize and admire them, but it is feasible only on condition that blood will not be spilled, and they will rob the royal mint. Interested? Here we go. All the gang members agree to take part in the robbery, and the day of the robbery begins. At 8.35 a.m., they all assemble in a van and head to the scene of the action. All the members on the van move to their destination. Rio takes off his mask and wonders who picked such stupid masks, they aren't even scary. A banter ensues, with everyone arguing about the masks. Moscow is landing. A little while later, everyone pops out, near the stash and starts setting up. During this, Tokyo wonders what will happen to ordinary people during the heist. The scene switches to other characters, a girl named Monica took a pregnancy test and it came back positive. They are going to sneak into the mints with three tons of equipment and weapons via a truck that delivers weekly printing paper. A convoy of two police cars and the truck is stopped as the path is blocked. The cops try to contact the base, but there is no signal. At this point, guns are pointed at them and they are forced to open the back of the truck. Next, Berlin and Denver disguise themselves as their own and give instructions on how to act to the other people in the car. Everyone is scattered to their cars. The scene changes again and we see Allison Parker being observed by a certain stranger. He asks if he can hook up with her and she agrees. They begin to discuss the possibility of dating. As the school bus arrives at the Mint for a field trip, 1016 the convoy pulls into the warehouse and we are transported to Arturito. He approaches the receptionist. She informs him that they will be parents in nine months. The man immediately sits down, as in addition to her, the man has a wife and three children. Rio turns off the alarm. The girls go inside, and Arturito yells at Monica, saying I'm not getting a divorce. They open the back of the truck, start unloading and suddenly robbers jump out of one of the rolls and open fire. Panic rises, the men deal with the guards, and Tokyo and Nairobi take care of the kids. There's a little problem, the sheep is gone, she's making out with a guy who's getting into her underpants. Briefly, he took a candid photo starring Alice and put it on the internet. Eventually Tokyo found the couple and brought them to the main hall where they put on masks. Berlin then starts to make a speech, he calls himself in charge, apologizes and says that if they obey, they will be kept alive. At this time Rio and Denver collect everyone's cell phones and ask for passwords. Berlin tries his best to show that he is not a monster and that he won't destroy anyone, and afterwards gives a meditation course to teach the young ones how to breathe. A call comes in and Berlin asks Monica to pick up the phone and Arturito holds her hand, but that girl is obedient. The other guys hide the vault door. Moscow's a real handyman. 
With two moves, he opens the vault. Inside is a huge wad of money and Denver decides to show off. The son says they're number one now, but Moscow quickly puts him out and says he's nothing and remembers that he's never worked anywhere. Denver wonders why you need to work to get you out of jail and his dad says there are a couple of guys who aren't very smart, which is why he's actually spent half his life behind bars. Berlina points a gun at Monica and asks her to answer. Archerito's wife is on the other end of the line and she answers convincingly enough. Another employee pulls a wire out of the toilet that they will use to communicate with the professor, which is untraceable. Making a board with the phones, Tokyo comments on everything. She says the mint was taken and no one even knows about it. Flashback to the night before the race. Tokyo approaches Ryo. He says he's serious about her. He gives her a medallion, which further sets up the plot, thus proposing to her. He's 12 years younger than her. Back to the present. Tokyo, with the heavy locket chain in her hand, regarded him with an excited gaze. Her fingers played with the metal pendant she had suddenly decided to put on herself. At that moment, Denver entered the hall, carrying important information. His voice rang out clearly and distinctly while he conveyed to everyone that the vault had been opened. Despite the tension, Berlin suddenly announced a moment's readiness. Tokyo, Denver, Rio, and Nairobi quickly sounded the alarms and opened the doors behind them. But at that moment, someone was peeking behind them. That someone turned out to be Arturio. Berlin, seeing him, threw him a threatening look and compared the situation to a character in a horror movie, there is always someone who everyone thinks is a victim, but in the end he turns out to be the smart one. With only 30 seconds left before the police arrive, the scene shifted back in time. The professor stood in the shadows explaining his plan. He talked about how the police shouldn't guess what they were doing. Let them think they had come just to steal, and then, finding that they had screwed up, decided to go back inside. But Tokyo, in her eagerness to act on her own, jumped outside and started an open fire. Rio, following her, fell victim to the gunman for failing to stick to the plan. His head was blown off and Tokyo, seized with rage and desperation, began shooting at the police, which was highly unplanned. Other gang members joined the fray, but eventually they too had to go back inside. The plan went awry. Their main goal of not spilling blood was compromised. But what happened next? This is just the beginning of a gripping tale of a heist that will change their lives forever.